Hi, this is Aaron LeClaire from Sibling Rivalry. Today I'm going to show you the unboxing of the King Rune 3D printer from Amazon.ca. It's currently priced at $157 and change, and that's Canadian rupees. Uh, this printer is pretty good quality given the price, and if you were to try and source and build a similar printer yourself, you'd probably spend upwards of $500. It has a 180 by 180 by 180 millimeter build area and it looks like it can do PLA or possibly ABS. Uh, it is an FDM printer, not SLA, so it uses filament. So right out of the box we've got a tip guide, instruction manual, just going to take a quick look at that. Okay, it's actually a pretty good instruction manual. It looks like it's not in completely broken English. And it's got all sorts of instructions on how to install the software, how to set up the printer, all the fun stuff. And a whole thing on how the user interface works on the LCD, which looks like a nice user interface. Okay. Uh, we also get a toolkit, which has a maybe a replacement Teflon tube for the Bowden extruder, some edge cutters, some Allen keys, a SD card, and a wrench. And oh, uh, some screws and some assorted bits and bobs. Comes with like a sample size of PLA. It says PLA plus. We'll find out if that's actually different from PLA. A spool holder, uh, which just uses some skate bearings just to roll filament on it and it's got an adjustable width on here so you can put on different sizes of spools which is pretty handy uh, let's go a little further in here oh, there we go so lob that out of frame <laughs> so we got a power supply which actually has the proper baffle and enclosure on it it's like one of the LED power supplies you usually see but it's got a Molex connector, looks like it's got a fuse in there, proper switch, and it's sealed off so you don't have to worry about someone sticking their finger in there and getting electrocuted, which is always a plus. Let's take a look at what else we got. Some packing foam, a little piece of tape, a standard Molex power supply cord. Let's take off the top layer of foam. This is actually all done with a cut expanded foam, so it's kind of nicely packaged. It looks like the printer is almost entirely pre-assembled. Uh, now it's got some English and Chinese instructions on how to set up the bed leveling, and it actually talks about calibration on there, so that hopefully will actually be pretty handy. And let's pull out the rest of this guy. How does he come out? He's in there pretty tight. Okay, so it's actually in more than one piece, and but it's attached electronically, so there's a wire in here. So I'm just gonna have to lift this up, uh, balance it precariously for a second, and set the box down, and set this on the table. Let's take a look at it. So that looks like that's a wheel for adjusting the bed, the bed height, or bed leveling, I should say. It's got a removable magnetic build surface, which is something you usually only see on like the premium 3D printers. So that's handy because you print on it. Once your print's done, you let it cool, peel it off, and you can just go whoop, and stuff comes right off of it. So that's nice. It's actually on what looks like a high wind rail here, which is really good. There's very little backlash. This uses a standard belt system, color LCD. It's all like a powder coated steel enclosure. Uh, it's got a Z depth gauge here, or like a height adjust for the Z limit. I'm going to reattach this later off camera because it's kind of, or actually, I think I can do that right now. Let's take a look. 
Oh, yep, it's just got a threaded insert in there, so this is my face. Hi, nice to meet you all. Pleasure doing business with you. So I've reattached that now, and it looks like this guy just goes in like this and locks in. Um, it does need to be loosened there for this to actually go in all the way. And it looks like one of the cables is unattached, so I, sorry, I kind of lied there for a second. But it uses a Acme lead screw. Now, it doesn't have the anti-backlash on it, but it should be pretty good. It uses uh, standard V-slot rails for the X and, I guess that's the X, yeah, the X and the Z, which seem to be set pretty good. Just standard belt for the X and Y. And it's got this sticker that keeps coming off. So we'll stick that back on there. Standard switches. Uh, it looks like it's using a CR10 knockoff uh, extruder and hot end. So it's using like the Mark 8 or Mark 10 extruder here. Small Bowden tube, which Looks like it's done with the Capricorn tubing, which has a higher tolerance. It's got some nice cable management. For $157, this is actually a really good printer, if it works as well as I think it will. And we'll see about that. It's got a heated bed. So, yeah, this is pretty impressive. I'm going to see if I can attach the XZ gantry while I've got you guys here. So let's take a further look in here and see what we've got. So there's a little USB SD card reader with the SD card in there. We'll look at that later. Some foam packing. Don't really need that. Some actually nice edge cutters, the Play-Doh brand, which I've actually seen sold for about 20 bucks a piece usually. So it's nice that that's included. It uh, looks like it comes with some extra screws and an extra hot end nozzle, which is always good because if you're using any like metal fill or anything like that for the filament, it's going to shred your nozzle, especially if it's brass and not heat treated in any way or coated. Uh, standard USB B to uh, standard A cable. And here's the Allen key. So let's see if we can find the right Allen key. Oh, and the spanner. So, let's see. Is it this guy? And it is. Okay, let's loosen these off. And attach this. This should be fairly straightforward. And I'll probably do a video at a later date showing you guys how to set up a 3D printer for working on projects of your own. And I'll probably do a video with Val showing her all the stuff about 3D printers and what she can do with them. So there's actually more than just two screws here that need to be loosened. There's actually uh, five because it locks this in on both axes. So let's see here. This might be a little fussy. Might be just a wee bit. Let's get this all lined up. Oh, there we go. Getting in there. Are we going to get in there? Or are we just going to fuss around? I think I need to loosen these a bit more. That's the one thing with these lock nuts. They're always a pain, no matter what you do. They always like to cause problems. There's a CNC that I built using these, and honestly, the whole thing would have been like done probably an hour earlier if it didn't have them. But there's not a lot of ways to attach an aluminum extrusion without that. Oh, there we go. And let's just get this guy adjusted there. Come 
Come on, work with me. Work with me, dude. Work with me. Okay. Almost got it. Which is going to be said a lot. At least I'm not cursing. Oh, there we go. There's that one. Let's get this guy. I don't know why I'm sweating. It's not like this is like strenuous. Ah, and there we go. And I'm just going to attach the motor cable there. Whew. Okay, let's get some. Screws tightened. Where did I set that Allen key? Oh, right there. Okay, so this guy should actually be ready to rumble, so to speak. Hopefully that doesn't count as copyright infringement. Saying that on YouTube. There's a whole thing with that. WWE announcer who invent or coined the term let's get ready to rumble and I'm suing the hell out of a whole bunch of people because he made it. Alright. Just tightening the last screw here. Hoping that I'm hoping, yes, hoping. That's a real word, not a uh, Aaronism. Hmm. Why is this? So it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. <laughs> you think that four years of engineering school. You wouldn't have to remember righty tighty lefty loosey, but that's just life. All right, well, looks like we're all good to go. It's got a bit of a wobble in there, but I'm sure I could just adjust a few things. It probably got loose after shipping. So yeah, there we go. It's fully assembled, um, other than obviously attaching the power cord, but you guys don't need to know how to do that. That's literally plug point A into point B. So, all right. Well, it's been swell. And hopefully we'll see you around and I'll show you some cool things you can do with the 3D printer, not just 3D printing. And we'll make some cool projects with this and see you next time. Bye for now. Thanks for watching our video and hopefully you liked it and you'll like and subscribe because we've got a whole bunch of new videos coming out including one where I'm going to show you how to set up calibrate and operate this printer as well as generally any 3d printer that operates the same way so any FDM printer you'll be good and we'll actually show you how to print a camera mount which we're actually using to film this video right now so thanks for watching and see you around